Good morning, everyone. I want to share with you about a particular moment several years ago in our house when Katie and Jude were much younger and we all sat down to watch a movie together. And there was some argument about which movie we were going to watch and whose turn it was to pick the movie. Now, at this time, it was Jude's turn, but his older sister Katie is stubborn enough to refuse any movie that her younger brother was to pick. And so I thought this was a good opportunity to teach them both about compromise, where one person gives some ground to the other so that both can reach an agreement and move forward together. And so we went through every possible movie, one by one, trying to get two yeses from these little people. Neither of them wanting to compromise to the other. They have me and Lynn for parents after all. Eventually, after much persuasion, I got a yes from Katie and I got a fine from Jude. Much to my delight, I thanked them both for their yeses and for learning to compromise. To which Jude quickly corrected me to say, I didn't say yes, I said fine. I want to share with you the title of my sermon this morning because in that moment, Jude, with his fine rather than a yes, he was defiant in obedience. Some verses from scripture in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1 reads, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honour your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and the admonition of the Lord. Bond servants, be obedient to those who are your masters, according to the flesh with fear and trembling in sincerity of heart as to Christ, not with eye service, as men pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatever good anyone does, he will receive the same from the Lord, whether he is a slave or free. And you, masters, do the same things to them, giving up, threatening, knowing that your own master also is in heaven and there is no partiality with him. God loves obedience because he understands its significance in our lives. But you and I know that obedience isn't always easy, but it is significant. Sometimes our obedience is more like a fine rather than a yes. The writer of Ephesians links this obedience with a certain sense of defiance. It's a defiance in the face of our enemy. We know that God has given us armor and spiritual weapons, not just so that we can defeat the enemy in our lives, but so that we can walk in obedience to God. In verse 10, we go on to read, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armour of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armour of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all stand, stand. Our very act of obedience towards God is an act of defiance in the face of our enemies. So when you do what God has asked you to do, you're standing against the work of the enemy in your life. Verse 13, it says, Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. 
above all, taking the shield of faith, which with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end, and with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, the utterance may be given to me, that I may be able to open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in change, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. And these are the words of Paul. And for many of us, we can view obedience at times as a burden, something that's forced on us against our will or against our desires. Sometimes we are defiant against the obedience and we choose to walk in our own way. Sometimes that obedience can feel like chains that hold us back. But Paul, as he writes to the church in Ephesus, he writes that he is an ambassador in chains, not chains of bondage or burden, but of obedience to Christ. The question for Paul isn't whether you or I are in chains or not. The question is what or who are we chained to? You know, Paul says, having been before a slave to sin, I am now declaring myself a slave to Christ. Defiance to one leads to obedience to the other. When we are defiant against the sin in our lives, we are obedient to God. You know, John also looks at this idea of obedience and freedom. And in 1 John and chapter 5, we read that whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves him, who begot, also loves him who is begotten of him. By this, we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and we keep his commandments, when we walk in that obedience. Verse 3, it says, for this is is the love of God, that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. Christ was obedient unto death, even to death on a cross. That shows us that we can do what needs to be done regardless of how difficult it is or what it might cost us, that we can be obedient even in this toughest of situations because obedience isn't always the easiest option. Sometimes it's rarely the easiest option, but it is always significant for us. Sometimes obedience can feel like a burden because we are torn between our soul and our spirit. And we're feeling and we're thinking to ourselves that we are Christians, we have given our lives to God and we're trying our best to walk in his ways. But Paul says it's a war zone. He writes the things that I want to do, I don't do. And the things that I don't want to do, those are the things that I find myself doing. Paul knows that he is at war and he is at war with himself. And then we have an enemy, a spiritual enemy, the prince of the power of the earth, and his spirit works in the sons of disobedience. And Paul says he used to work in me, but now this is an overcoming spirit. I want you to tell yourself this morning that you have an overcoming spirit within you. In verse four of First John, we read that, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Christ was begotten of the Father and he suffered the cross for our salvation. Through that, he has overcome the world and through him, we are no longer slaves to sin. We were once sons and daughters of disobedience, but now we are alive to Christ, born of the Spirit of God led by the Spirit of God and walking in obedience to his word and his will. I want to encourage you this morning 
Read those verses again in Ephesians and in 1 John. Allow the Word of God to speak into your spirit, to connect with what God says about you, what God has equipped you with, and what God has enabled you to do. There is a war that goes on within us. There is a war that goes on around us, and it's a spiritual war. It's a war for our faith. It's a war for our hope. It's a war for what God has given and called us into. And we need to remember that God has also and even equipped us with spiritual weapons, with spiritual gifts, with spiritual armor to walk in obedience to his word and his will. Pray for yourself this morning. Pray for those who live within your house this morning. Pray for your neighbors. Pray for your church this morning. Pray that what God has said for us and given to us that we would take with both hands and walk forward into this new week. Amen. You